morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Global Atheist News Roundup, dateline 14th of September 2024. This week's headlines. If we can't speak, why live? The BBC meets women after the new Taliban law. Pakistani religio-political leaders were convicted of incitement to kill far-right Dutch politician Hert Wilders. Sweden cracks down. Quran burners face prosecution. Canadians fight back. Over one million people gathered in London to protest Israel's genocide. Trump's abortion pivot hasn't shaken evangelical Christian leaders' support. Evangelicals rally behind a statement that hopes to combat polarization with revival. Polyamorists look for their place in the church as the practice loses its taboo. The bishop's bench is branded an undemocratic anomaly in a Lord's debate. A new law imposed by Afghanistan's Supreme Leader, Haibatullah Akhundzada, gives the Propagation of Virtue and Prevention of Vice Ministry, the, the Taliban's morality police, sweeping powers to enforce a stringent code of conduct for Afghan citizens. For women, who have already had their freedoms crushed bit by bit by a relentless series of decrees, it delivers another blow. If we can't speak, why even live? We're like dead bodies moving around. See this video. You had to be very careful and discreet when talking to women here because they're already operating in an environment of brutal restrictions. And now the Taliban's morality police have been given sweeping powers. It's only been a few weeks since the law was announced, so it's unclear how stringently it'll be implemented. But already there's a ripple effect of fear that you feel when speaking to people here. We meet teenage girls who've already lost three crucial years of education. Their voices might need to be hidden but they want their words to be heard. If we go out, we're scared. If we take a bus or remove our masks, we're scared. If we speak louder, we're scared. There's so much fear and stress. If we can't speak, then why go out at all? Why even live? Until last year, groups of women took to the streets demanding their rights, risking violence and detention. The Taliban cracked down on the marches until they stopped altogether. This woman broke down, telling us how she was detained last year while participating in protests. The Taliban beat me and dragged me into a vehicle saying, why are you acting against us? This is an Islamic system. They took me to a dark, frightening place and insulted me with terrible words. We were treated like animals. After being released from detention, we weren't the same people we were before. Two men stood trial in absentia on Monday at a high security court in the Netherlands. Pakistan did not force the men to appear in court despite being requested to do so. Jalali, a 56-year-old religious leader, was handed a 14-year sentence for calling on his followers to kill Wilders and promising that they would be rewarded in the afterlife. Rizvi, 29, was sentenced to four years after urging followers to kill Wilders. In September 2023, judges sentenced Pakistani cricketer Khalid Latif to 12 years behind bars for incitement to murder Wilders after the firebrand lawmaker sought to arrange a competition for blasphemous caricatures. Wilders cancelled the caricature contest after protests broke out in Pakistan and he was inundated with death threats. 
Vildas has been under 24-hour state protection since 2004. His PVV, Freedom Party, was the big winner in the Dutch parliamentary elections last November. This case has had a huge impact on me and my family, Wilders told the court last week. In a controversial move reflecting growing tensions between free speech and religious sensitivities, Swedish prosecutors have announced plans to put two men on trial for burning the Quran during public protests. The men, Salwan Momika and Salwen Najem, face charges of offences of agitation against ethnic or national group for their actions, which sparked outrage across the Muslim world and raised concerns about potential jihadist attacks. See this video. Quran burners face prosecution. Sweden cracks down. In a controversial move reflecting growing tensions between free speech and religious sensitivities, Swedish prosecutors have announced plans to put two men on trial for burning the Quran during public protests. The men, Salwan Momika and Salwan Najem, face charges of, quote, offense of agitation against ethnic or national groups for their actions, which have sparked outrage across the Muslim world and raised concerns about potential jihadist attacks. Senior prosecutor Anna uh, Hankio stated, both men are prosecuted for having on these four occasions made six, excuse me, made statements and treated the Quran in a manner intended to express contempt for Muslims because of their faith. This legal action follows a series of Quran burning incidents in Sweden and neighboring Denmark that strained diplomatic relations with Muslim majority countries, even leading to a violent protest at the Swedish embassy in Baghdad, where uh, the embassy was stormed twice and the second time it was set on fire. The case has ignited a fierce debate with free speech advocates arguing that such acts, however offensive, should be protected under Sweden's constitution. Adding to the complexity, one of the accused, Momika, himself is a refugee from Iraq. This decision comes amidst a complex background of rising anti-immigrant sentiment in Europe, concerns over Islamic extremism, and debates about the integration of Muslim communities in secular Western societies. Vocal Canadians protest against a Muslim march. See this video. Go back to your country with that shit! Yeah, this is Canada! Yeah, no playing on the streets! Blocking the fucking streets with your stupid terrorist kid! Fuck off with that shit! Get back! Go back to your country! Go back to your fucking country! Go back to your Islamic shithole! Go starve! Go back! Go back to your country! Go back, go Who said go back to your white fucking Canada? Yeah! This is Canada! Get the fuck out of that shit! Fuck that shit! Fuck that shit! That doesn't belong in Canada! Fuck that shit! That's a terrorist chant! Mohammed was a pedophile and you're chanting about that fucking shit! <laughs> Fuck that shit! Fuck that shit! Get that shit out of my country! This doesn't belong in Canada! This is my country! Don't do that shit in my country! My country, not yours! Yeah, you don't belong! Fuck that stupid Islamic chant in my country! Thank you, thank you. Press it. Press it. Press it. 85,000 children died, died of hunger. 85,000 Yemeni children died of hunger. 400,000 died in Yemen. 650,000 died in Syria. 650,000 died in Syria. I don't want him to take money. I don't want him to. 650,000 dead. 
Your stupid Muslim chant does not belong in my country. Do you understand? Do you understand that this is my country, not yours? Do you understand that you fucking cockroaches do not belong in my country? Go back to your country! Go back to your country! Yeah, I, uh, on the Hindu, I belong here! Yeah, I belong here! I was born here! Yeah, speak English, you fucking... Speak English! Speak English! Say it in English now! Fucking foreign accent, I can't even understand you! Talk like a Canadian! You hear us? Talk like a Canadian! Go back to your country! No, you're not. You gotta go back. You don't. You don't belong here. You don't belong in my country. You don't belong here. Let me make myself clear. You don't belong here. That's right, that's right. No, 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 he did not. Yes, he did. Out of the way. Out of the way. Back up. Everybody back up. Back up, guys. Back up. You provoked this with your fucking Islamic prayers. It's your fault. You provoked it. You provoked it! It's your fault! You provoked it! You provoked the dog with your Islamic prayer! You provoked it! This was your fault! That's animal abuse! Stop abusing animals! Stop abusing animals! You know that you're bombing out! She attacked the dog! She attacked the animal! Stop abusing! I know you people hate animals! I know you hate... I know your hair religion hates dogs! You think dogs are dirty! I know this! This is Canada though! You can't abuse dogs in my country! You can't do any of this shit in my country! We have animal rights in my country! Stop abusing animals! Stop abusing dogs! Your religion hates dogs! I know that! You're attacking the dog! This is Canada. You can't attack dogs in my country. Okay, I'll take a look at that up here. We're we'll dealing with something. Over one million people gathered in London to protest Israel's genocide. This represents an eighth of the population of London and is one of the largest protests in the history of Great Britain. See this video. In June, an effort to protect access to IVF in vitro fertilization failed in the US after in the US Senate after most Republicans, including Trump's running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, voted against it. About the same time, the Southern Baptist Convention at its annual meeting voted in support of a measure calling for more government regulation of the process. Al Mohler, the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, who in June called IVF immoral, warned Trump in an editorial this week that he risks alienating his anti-abortion base. Trump needs to remember that he cannot win without strong, very strong, pro-life support, Mohler wrote in World Magazine, an evangelical Christian publication. The other side is not impressed with his equivocations on the issue, even as his base is endangered by any confusion. Leela Rose, head of the influential anti-abortion group Live Action, blasted the Trump campaign on social media, saying, given the current situation, we have two pro-abortion tickets. A Trump win is not a pro-life win right now. Trump 
has suggested his shift on the issue is a result of raw politics. Since the 2022 Dobbs decision, which overturned Roe and allowed states to make their own abortion policy, abortion-related ballot initiatives have gone the way of abortion rights activists, even in red states such as Kansas and Ohio. Trump blamed the Republican Party's anti-abortion stance for its middling results in the 2022 midterm elections. With 10 more abortion-related ballot initiatives in November, including in swing states like Arizona, the issue has the potential to fracture the Republican coalition. White evangelicals, who have long heavily supported the GOP and who alone make up 30% of the party, according to a public religion research institute, are disproportionately opposed to abortion. 72% believe the practice should be illegal in all or most cases. Nationwide, 64% of Americans told PRRI that abortion should be legal in all or most cases, including 62% of white Catholics and 57% of Hispanic Catholics, despite the official opposition from the Catholic Church. When it comes to IVF, 70% of Americans say IVF access is a good thing, according to an April poll from Pew Research, with majorities of every major religious group saying the same, including 63% of white evangelicals. A group of evangelical Christians, hoping to reclaim their tradition from the culture wars, put out a call on Monday for a broader understanding of evangelicalism, urging a rejection of political idolatry and its messengers, as well as the false idols of power, wealth and strength, rather than the true God. The effort, titled Our Confession of Evangelical Conviction, is laid out in a new religious statement unveiled last week, which is signed by an array of evangelical pastors and leaders. We reject the false teaching that anyone other than Jesus Christ has been anointed by God as our Saviour, or that a Christian's loyalty should belong to any political party, the confession reads. Former President Donald Trump isn't mentioned in the statement, and supporters of the confession insisted their efforts weren't singularly about his presidential campaign, but they acknowledged that their new movement is at least partly a response to fervent evangelical support that helped to fuel the business mogul's rise to power. We pray that God's Spirit will revive our church and strengthen Christ's people to be agents of his presence and blessing in this turbulent age, the document concludes. Several of the signers said political polarization and the culture wars are driving evangelicals away from the tradition, with some even abandoning the term evangelical altogether. But Christina Edmondson, former Dean of Intercultural Student Development at Calvin University, insisted on a broader vision for evangelicalism, pointing to two historically black denominations, Church of God in Christ and Progressive National Baptist Convention, that have also endorsed this confession. It's an open question how much traction the group will get from the broader conservative evangelical community, but Sky Jethani, co-host with, with Phil Vischer of the Evangelical-Oriented Holy Post podcast, said he hopes the confession will embolden people who feel unable to speak out. Hopefully, younger generations can look at this statement Look at the women and men who've signed it and recognise it as a remnant who are putting their commitment to Christ and his gospel ahead of political allegiance, he said. In May 2023, Curlin Richter, then a priest at an Episcopal, 
at an Episcopal church in Portland, Oregon, attended an adoption ceremony that legally recognised her baby's three parents. The event, featuring a large celebratory Danish pastry and a Mary Oliver poem, was a step towards formalising Richter's family, which includes her husband, with whom she has an adult child, and her partner, with whom she had a baby, in February 2023. Soon after, eager for advice on how to disclose the shape of her family to her congregation, Richter spoke to her bishop, but in June her bishop gave her a choice. Return to monogamy or renounce your ordination vows. This is just the shape of my family, said Richter, who, after experiencing a year-long church investigation that she called abusive, ultimately renounced her ordination in June. We have a really sweet baby who has a mama, a daddy, a papa, and a couple of great siblings, and I don't see how any of that should prevent me from being a priest. In addition to Richter, at least two other non-monogamous Episcopal priests have renounced their ordination vows since then, due to tensions between their church roles and their family structures. Non-monogamy is probably more present in your life than you think it is, said the Reverend Tori Mullen. She pointed out, it can include an aging person seeking a companion while caring for a spouse with memory loss, or a young person dating multiple people at once. Such relationships aren't unbiblical, Mullen said, as the Bible doesn't offer one cohesive model for Christian families. The Hebrew, the Hebrew scriptures often depict non-monogamy as a social safety net, and Jesus emphasized ethical relationship in community and care for the marginalized, she said. Others point to the Bible's examples of polygamy as tantamount to polyamory, or even to the Trinity as a theological instance of polyamory. An indefensible, undemocratic anomaly. That was the damning incitement of the bishop's bench in a House of Lords debate this week. As the government sets out plans to reform the upper chamber, we are ensuring that seats by the right that seats by right for Church of England bishops are coming under increased scrutiny, said the NSS. A privileged political position for one denomination of a religion, of one religion, has no place in a 21st century democracy. See this video. So any serious proposals to reform the House of Lords must, ad must address the unjustified privilege of the state church bishops bench. Indeed, 62% of the population, when asked, say that there are no, that no religious clerics should have an automatic right to seats in the House of Lords. It doesn't stop the contribution of noble uh, lords as bishops to this House if they are appointed on their own merit as life peers. But after a century of decline in religious attendance in Britain, the claim that bishops or any other religious representatives speak for any significant constituency is unwarranted and does not hold up to, uh, hold up to scrutiny. Following this news, Tercy and I will be chatting with Barry Desborough, who is a keen evolutionist. You can join in by text, down the sidebar, see others as well. This has been Global Atheist News. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching.